We are here with Tron is Bad, one of Magic the Gathering content creator that has only played how much Yu-Gi-Oh before? I have played one tournament in my entire life. I played in the year 2016 Chaos Dragons. I played one tournament, it was a local tournament, it was like a weekend 1k. My buddy ran me through the deck, said, hey, this is what you have to do, you have to fill your graveyard with like light and dark monsters, and you have to special summon a bunch of stuff uh you have to special summon like the uh what was it the chaos sorcerer right um and you just you get you you end up chaining your entire graveyard and bringing stuff back and it was like sometimes a one turn win and i learned the one line of the deck and i top four the tournament <laughs> yeah and i lost to another chaos dragons deck so it's like... <laughs> you're like that spider-man meme where you're both looking at each other Except for someone might have known the deck better than you. <laughs> uh, that person 100% did, and I said, you know what? I'm good with this. I'm never going to play Yu-Gi-Oh! again. My knowledge of Yu-Gi-Oh! is uh, probably a solid 3%. I'm going to introduce you to the way we're doing it this now, and it's a little bit of a twist to what you might think it is, okay? Instead of giving you five different cards with no context, and you have to say whether they're good or bad, I'm going to give you five cards from three different archetypes an archetype might be something that you might be familiar with, like uh, the Chaos okay. Dragons deck. So I'll give you five quote-unquote Chaos Dragons cards that would go in the deck, and you're going to have to decide whether that de whether that deck is good or bad. And at the end, evaluate all five sure. of those cards, and then take a, take a snap back, evaluate all of those five cards into the, its own archetype, feel, and then you get the feeling of how good it might be, and then you're gonna, we're going to look at all three different archetypes, and then at the end, okay. you're going to tell me which archetype you think it was is tier one right now was tier one before and is no longer tier one and which one was never tier one okay so keep that let's in mind as you're evaluating the cards let's go ahead and get into the first card in the first archetype are you ready i am ready magical meltdown it's a spell card when this card is activated you can add one uh a, a laster aliester the invoker from your deck to your hand the activation of your cards and effects that include an effect that fusion summons a fusion monster cannot be negated. Okay, so it immediately makes them uncounterable. That's cool. Yep. Also, your opponent's cards and effects cannot activate when a monster is fusion summoned this way. You can only activate one magical meltdown per turn. Okay, so it has activate this at sorcery speed, and we all know how I feel about that. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> um, it makes your... It makes your... So you add you add a creature to your hand right. when the card's activated. The activation of your cards and effects that include an effect that fusion summons a monster cannot be negated. So if you have an effect that fusion summons a creature, it's uncounterable. Right. And your opponent's cards and effects cannot activate when a monster is fusion summoned this way. So it's also a stacks piece. It's um, kind of a stacks piece. It's a stacks piece when it's summoned. So they can't use it's a... a um, when this card is summoned to kill this card kind of card. Okay, I think that this card is a combo piece, and I think that it is good, not overpowered. I how do you want me to rate it? Scale of one to ten or Oh well we'll we'll do we'll do like an overall archetype okay, uh, okay. rating I at the end I when think... you get all the context of the cards. I just wanted to get want to give you the context and let you see the cards first okay. and and then figure it out at the end. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, do you know what a field spell is? Uh, that's like that. Uh, that's that like tune world, right? You're looking at one. Oh, this is a field spell. Yes. So this is just this is like a global enchantment. It is like a global enchantment. That, okay. That's why it right. has that wording on it. That's like, why would it have this if it was if, if it was just a sorcery? So this sure, stays sure, on the sure. field, and the effects still apply even after you add the Alistair the oh, to your hand. Okay, I feel like that is more busted. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel yeah. like that is more useful. It's not just this turn that that effect happens. It's like while this is on the field. It's it? every turn. Yeah, yeah it's got it's it. every got turn. It. All right, let's move on to the next card. A little bit, a little bit more inching for more context here. Um, this the field spell searches Alistair the Invoker, and I'm going to let you read this card. Okay, Alistair the Invoker. Uh, I was about to say he's four mana, but he's not a. He, he's a four star. Uh, one thousand eighteen hundred spell cast effect. Quick effect. I'm assuming that's kind of like an instant. It is an instant. Uh, yeah. You can send this card from your. Okay. You can send this card from your hand to the graveyard. 
Then target one fusion monster you control. It gains uh, 1,000 attack and defense until the end of this turn. If this card is normal summoned or flip face up, you can add one invocation from your deck to your hand. What is an invocation? You will find out invocation. If a card is in quotes like that, it means it is a name of a card. It is a card name. Okay. Um, I like that. It's an instant speed. So it's an instant speed. You can buff something. And then if it's normal summoned, you tutor for something else. Okay. Right. So right. so so you do you are taking it that it's an instant speed for just the hand effect, right? And it's not instant speed for normal summoning. Correct. Okay. Do you know you know how Correct. normal summoning works? You know how special summoning works because you've played that one it's, deck before. You get Yeah, you get one normal summon per turn yep. and special summon happens yep. X amount of times if you can meet the costs of it. Yep, yep. And uh, you're aware that you start okay. with five cards in your hand, you have 8,000 life points like all to start the game. Like the, you, you know all that stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people are, are, just don't even know any of that. So it's cool that, you've, that you know at least that much. So, so you, you get what's going on right now. Magical Meltdown adds Alistair, and then Alistair adds Invocation. Can you oh, guess the what the next card is? Invocation. Invocation. Got it. Okay. God, every card the text gets smaller. <laughs> every card <laughs> the text gets smaller and smaller. Okay. Fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand as fusion material. If summoning an invoked fusion monster this way, you can also banish monsters from your field and or either player's gra and or either player's graveyard as fusion material. Yeah. That seems busted right there. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one banished Alistair the Invoker. Shuffle this card into the deck, and if you do, add that card to your hand. You can only use this effect of invocation once per turn. Um, so it's a spell card. You said it's not a. This is this is not like a global enchantment. This is a sorcery. So you can only use the. Okay, so you can only use the effect of invocation once per turn. So you can only play one invocation a turn. Right. Uh, so fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck. Okay, so you fusion summon one. Monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand as fusion material. If summoning an invoked fusion monster this way, you can also banish monsters from your field and other. Okay, all right. I uh, I'm understanding the gist of this card. I do. Wanna, I do want to let you know that the there's one here. thing that we kind of glossed over about this. It, when it says you can okay. only use this effective invocation once per turn, it's not talking about the fusion summon. It's talking about what was said right before that, which is. The targeting one of your banished Alistair, shuffle oh. it in your deck, and if you do, add oh, Alistair it. to your hand. That happened. Oh, that, that you can so only use you once can turn. do invocation multiple times. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you see, okay, but everything else you can do multiple times. Right. So if you see, there's a little bit of a loop going on here. There's magical meltdown, and then there's and then you adds Alistair. Alistair adds adds invocation. You play invocation, and then you immediately can use the invocation effect and shuffle invocation back in your deck to add Alistair back to your oh hands. Oh my god, okay, I'm noticing a loop. So, you use Magical Meltdown to get Alistair, to get Invoker, uh, to, I'm sorry, you use Magical Meltdown to get Alistair, Alistair gets Invocation, Invocation, Fusion Summons, whatever you want, you shuffle Alistair back in your deck. I'm assuming the fusion summon is going to get Alistair again, or and then you get another invocation, and then you get more monsters. That's what that's what I'm assuming so yeah, far. Yeah. <laughs> well, you shuffle invocation back, and you add Alistair to your hand. So that for the next turn, you can normal summon Alistair again, and then search invocation again. Okay. Okay. So that's that's the loop. Um, let's go ahead and go on to one of the thingies that you said this card the that invocation might be able to summon. Invoked. Makaba, Makaba, Makaba. Okay, Makaba, Makaba, Makaba. Either a, one. Got it. Alistair the Invoker plus one light monster. Once per turn during either player's turn, when a spell or trap card or monster effect is activated, you can send the same type of card, monster spell or trap from your hand to the graveyard and negate the activation. If you do, banish that card. Okay, wait, hold on. What? <laughs> okay. Once per turn. <laughs> Rewind. During Once, dude. Okay, Yu-Gi-Oh uses too many words. Just, just say the thing. <laughs> like, say the thing you want to say. They're, they're saying one thing in like four different sentences. The, the, well, uh, Once per turn, during either player's turn, when a spell or trap card or monster effect is activated, you could send the same type of card, monster, spell, or trap from your hand to the graveyard. Negate the activation, and if you do, 
banish that card. Okay, I'm lost now. <laughs> You're more lost than when you read it the I'm first time. Lost. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Let me let me just let me, let me map this out for you. The reason why Yu-Gi-Oh okay. has a lot of text is something called problem solving card text. It allows you to know what's cost to activate a card, when a card resolves, and how a card resolves, and how a card is activated. Then all of these all these words actually matter. Okay. Once per turn during either player's turn, when a spell trap card is activated or a monster effect is activated, colon, that means that it that um. When it says during either player's turn, it's the same exact thing as saying quick effect, but but some cards say during either player's turn, some cards say quick effect. Okay. Um, you can s send the same type of card, monster spell or trap, from your hand to the graveyard, semicolon. That semicolon matters. That means the card goes to the graveyard as an activation cost. Similar to like um, when, when, you, when, you, when you crack an ex expedition map, and the expedition map goes to the graveyard for cost, so you can't just kill it on the stack it goes to the graveyard right away yeah. that's what that colon okay. means if it said some if it was a semicolon instead of a colon it would not go to the graveyard for cost it would just stay in your hand and if this got negated or countered in any way by like a tishana's tidebinder or something right then the card would stay in your hand but since it has a colon it's a cost so that matters Jeez. and, and then okay. it says All negate right. the activation comma and if you do comma banish that card the and if you do also matters because it, it means that the first effect has to happen for the second effect to happen. So the card doesn't get banished if you don't negate if you don't negate the activation of the card. And there's there's okay. if, so, if, if it was worded differently, it wouldn't actually resolve that way. So all these all all this all right. actually matters. It just takes a lot of knowledge to know that. Got it. So what you're saying is, in order to play this card, I need a BS in English. Got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay it is like Got a language it. yeah you're right it's bs language i i, I need four years and two hundred thousand dollars in order to play Yu Gi Oh. Correct. understood <laughs> i mean you played Yu Gi Oh and got top four in the first tournament and you didn't know any of this <laughs> i i remembered the pictures <laughs> <laughs> okay so um so Read this one more time. I know you didn't understand it the first two times, but maybe you'll understand it the third time after, and maybe I okay. made it even more confusing for you. Okay. Once per turn, during either player's turn, when a spell, trap, card, or monster effect is activated, colon, you can send the same type of card, monster, spell, or trap, from your hand to the graveyard. Semicolon. <laughs> negate the activation. And if you do, comma, banish that card. Yep. Okay. So... Your opponent activates an effect. Okay. Your opponent... And I'm going to put this in magic terms, obviously. Your opponent plays a DRC. I activate my counterbalance. I look at the top card. It's the same one. we pitch, I pitch that. It gets countered. This card, you play a light. You play, uh, you play uh, some kind of monster, right? And the effect is activated. And it's a light type. I can send a light type or monster or whatever, from my hand to the graveyard and your stuff is countered. This doesn't counter abilities. It counters the activation of cards. So it can't actually counter a counterbalance unless you're casting the counterbalance. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I understand it a little bit better now. Okay, so... I at least understand the fact that a trap is activated, and if that trap is activated, I can pitch trap to negate the trap. Yes, yes. This is less Tachana's Tidebinder and more counterspell on a creature. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. Cancel oh, what, oh, what I just said. Okay. It's, literally, it's, it's literally great distortion. Yeah, I was just going to say it's Kozla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, why, do we not think, why do we not think of that? You're literally the Tron guy. It's oh. Kozla the Great Distortion. Oh, my God. Oh, this is the no. perfect card to give you. I didn't even think about That's that. This is so Kozla. Invoked. Makeba is Kozla the Great Distortion. Got it. Boom. I mean, you don't even... I, which is... That's crazy. Which is funny because... Speaking speaking of which, hold on, please hold. Oh, that looks Kozilek, beautiful. The great distortion. Oh, that was funny. That All was... right, continue. How did we not see that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. Let's go on to the last card in this archetype. Invoked Purgatrio. Okay, twenty three two thousand fiend infusion effect. Alistair the Invoker plus a fire monster. Okay, so I'm I'm assuming Alistair can get multiple different kinds of fusion monsters depending on the element uh that you're pitching for the fusion this card gains 200 attack for each 
card your opponent controls. Can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each. If this card attacks a defense position, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. I'm assuming piercing battle damage is trample. It is trample. Over okay. defense position so, monsters specifically. There's already trample over attack position monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! That's why it just doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So this card, I think, is pretty... I think it's pretty good because it uh, it gets plus 200 for each card your opponent controls. So that's not just monster. That's that's face down trap, face down ma or whatever, right? Yeah. So each card your opponent controls. So that's cool. If they, if they have eight cards in play, it gets plus 1600, right? Yes. And it board it it, it can theoretically board wipe. Yes. Um, and your opponent and just takes massive deal, damage. Yeah, deal face damage. So. That, Card's cool. It's punchy. Yep. So they they have a punchy thing, they and they have a a Kozilek thing. Oh my God! Alistair the Invoker is legitimately just Karn the Great Creator, and you are toolboxing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. This is the Tron okay. deck. This is the Tron deck. Nice. Nice. Okay. I like it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Magical Meltdown gets Alistair, Alistair gets Invocation, and then Invocation summons either one of these, whether you're going first or second, basically. Okay. And then, and then if that doesn't, like, win the game already, you just can put Invocation back to the deck, add Alistair back to your hand, and then do it again next turn. Mm-hmm. So, okay, now that you have that well, list, go ahead. I was just going to say, this, uh, this seems like a deck that has... A lot of different lines, depending if you're player draw. Yeah, really, it really does. Okay. And, and don't forget Alistair's okay. quick effect ability from hand, making Perga Trio plus a thousand attack, too. Uh... <laughs> and if you have okay. multiple Alistairs, right. you can, like, pump it twice. If you happen to draw multiples of them. That's so true. It's pretty cool. Okay, that's true. That's true. So you can definitely kill your opponent out of nowhere, and they have to play through a Kozilek uh, if, if you're going second. Um, it, it only happens once per turn. You can only use it once per turn, unlike Kozilek, but still, it's pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and that go into the next archetype good. so you can kind of get more of a feel of how powerful the other cards are in Yu-Gi-Oh, not just this archetype. Let's go ahead and read the first card okay. of the next archetype, which is... Runic Freezing Curses Spell Card. I remember that little lightning bolt, so you, you could play that, you could play that uh, as a response to somebody. Yes, if I you... Believe. If or you, you can just... you can. If you set it, you could flip it face up at any time, right? Yes, but you can also activate it from instant okay. speed on your own turn from your hand without having to set it first. Got it, got it. Activate one of these effects, but skip your next battle phase after activation. Target one effect monster your opponent controls and negate its effects until the end of this turn, then banish the top three cards of your opponent's decks. Okay, so you cancel an effect and then you mill your opponent three cards, or you special summon one runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. You can only activate one runic freezing curses per turn. Okay, so this it's it's a modal card. Um, yep. Y you pick one or the other, and both of them seem pretty strong. I think the special summon is stronger than the first portion. Um, I don't like that you lose your battle phase, but uh, I guess it's probably substantial. Okay, now let's see the next card. Runic Flashing Fire, another one, okay. Target one special summon monster your opponent controls, destroy it. Then banish the top two cards of your opponent's deck. Special summon one runic monster from your extra deck to the monster you know. Okay, so... Uh, this is a mill deck? Uh, or maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe you can play it like a mill that, deck. Yeah. Okay. Or you special summon a bunch of runics to your field and then once you do that you got a whole bunch of runics out and then you just go ha next turn maybe i don't know um you summon it to the extra monster zone are you familiar with the extra monster zone since you haven't played no since? idea what the okay. fuck that is so, so, <laughs> so um your your board is like normal like five monster zones and five spell and trap zones okay but each player gets to gets an extra monster zone it's a it's a monster zone above the second so you and only fourth get monster one zone. right do you only get one? And you only get one, yeah. You get one, your opponent gets the other one. Uh, one first. If your opponent chooses okay. one, you get the other one. If you choose one, your opponent gets the other one. Um, and you can't have both at the same time. Unless there's, there's crazy circumstances where you can, but uh, usually you can only get one. 
And this specifically has to summon a monster in the extra monster zone, and you can't have two monsters in the extra monster zone at once. So it's not like you can summon a bunch uh, of these monsters. Oh, okay, okay. So um, now that you have that context, let's move on to the third card. Runic tip. Activate one of these effects. Skip your alphys. Add one runic card from your deck to your hand, except the runic tip. Except the runic tip. Then banish the top card of your opponent's deck. Special summon one runic monster. Okay, so I see a trend. Runic tip mills one. Runic flashing fire mills two. Runic freezing mills three. Mm -hmm. Um, extra special special summon one. Okay, yeah, uh, I I this one is a this one's a tutor mill one or a special summon. Okay. Yep. And there are other runic cards, but I'm not going to show them to you. These are just like the most kind of the most important ones. Got it. Now, since the runic card special summon a runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone, let me just show you the one that they summon most of the time. Hugin, the runic wings. Zero, oh, it's a zero, zero. Two runic monsters. If this card is special summoned from the extra deck, you can discard one card and add one runic field spell from your deck to your hand. If another card or cards you control would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish this card you control instead. If this card is on the field, if this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, return this card to the extra deck. Okay, if this card is special summoned from the extra deck, colon, ah, you can yes. discard one card. Add one card. You can discard one card. Add one runic field spell from your deck to your hand. Discard one card. So you can special or semicolon. Yeah. Got it. So you can discard one card to add one of the other runic cards that we just saw to your hand. No, if another card because you... the other ones aren't no? field spells. Oh, okay. So you can't you can't do that. No. If another card you control you can banish this card you control instead. If this card on the field is destroyed by So this card gets destroyed and it's almost always coming back because of the runic spells that you showed me. Right. Okay. All right. All right, and this discards a card to add a field spell from deck to the hand, so I'm going to show you the field spell. Runic Fountain. You can activate Runic Quick... Sp <laughs> okay. You can activate Runic Quick Play spell cards from your hand during your opponent's turn. That's important. <laughs> Once per turn, if you activate a Runic Quick Play spell card, you can target up to three Runic Quick Plays. Ah, uh, okay. I see what's going on now. You can mill your opponent. Is this a mill deck? This is a mill deck. <laughs> this is a mill deck. Okay. All right. That's cool. So you loop your... Okay. Okay. So Runic Fountain's out. You activate a Runic card. And then you target the three Runic Quick Play spells that you discarded from the wing, the wing girl, right? Yep. And then you're cycling through them, continuously milling your opponent. Yep. Holy moly. Wow. Yeah, I just figured it out. You you figured it out. Yeah, you liked it. You like you like it. Out. Out. That that's pretty cool. Okay, that's pretty cool. Notably, you don't have to mill your opponent with these cards because they're just good cards anyway. Because they negate stuff and they destroy stuff, right? right? Um, there's one that destroys spell and traps too, but I didn't have enough cards to show you. Uh, with that, we have five cards total. Got it. So that would be if if I could show you a six card, it would be the six card. All it does is the same exact thing as the other quick play spells, but it just kills a spell or trap card. So there's like a controlling element too as well. It's like a mill control deck basically. Got it. But it's also like an engine that you can put in a deck, like the Light Swarns or an engine that were in your uh, uh, Chaos deck. It's an engine okay. of cards. It's not like a, a full gotcha. deck of Light Swarms. So you can yeah, yeah, basically, this, is, this can be an engine that you can put in a different deck to have like a controlling mill element to your deck that already has a game plan. Put both decks together, basically. Mm -hmm. Or you can just play it as a full Runic deck and just be full-on control mill and never have a battle phase. That's wild. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, do you, do you like this archetype? What do you think of this archetype as we, uh, until we go on to the last one? I hate being milled out. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. I think it is my least, it is one of my least favorite feelings ever, especially like playing Tron. That sucks. Um, but this, uh, this seems pretty, this p seems pretty strong. And I was able to figure out the loop. All on my own. Yeah, so I was you were like, able... pretty happy about that. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You're like, oh, these all these cards banish cards, huh? Maybe you can yeah, mill your opponent out. 
Interesting, yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, let's go on to the last archetype. Medallion of the Ice Barrier. Add one Ice Barrier monster from your deck to your hand. It is a tutor. It is a demonic tutor, <laughs> literally. It is a demonic tutor for a uh, Ice Barrier creature. Monster. Yep, and that's it. <laughs> okay. Very simple, straightforward. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next card. Mirror of the Ice Barrier. This is another one of those quick play cards. During this turn, each time a card or cards is banished from your hand, field, and or graveyard by your opponent's activated monster effect, apply the following effects based on where the cards were banished from. From If, they, if it was banished from your hand, banish up to two random cards from your opponent's hand. If it was banished from your field, banish up to two cards from your opponent's controls. Banished from your graveyard, banish up to two cards. Okay, so basically whatever your opponent does... To you, you do to them. Yep. By but, playing but this double. in response. But double. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, that, that's you got it right. All that's right, pretty. Well, that one's pretty standard. Yeah. Pretty standard. Now let's go ahead and move on to big shakalaka ice barrier cards. Okay. Brianak, Brianic, Brianak, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. 2314 Sea Serpent Synchro Effect. One tuner, non tuner. What is that? Okay. So, did you ever see a synchro summon or synchro summon yourself while you were playing Yu Gi Oh? I couldn't tell you even if I did. Okay. A synchro monster is cards that are in your extra deck. Okay. So, you know what an extra deck is by, by reading the fusion monsters, and you had an yeah. extra deck when you played um, the 15 card mm -hmm. companion zone. This white card is a synchro monster that goes in that 15 card companion zone. Okay. Level six, meaning that you need to combine levels on your field with a certain requirement. This one tuner plus one non tuner monster. Um, cards, where you see it says Sea Serpent Synchro Effect there in the black letters. Uh, if, if a card is a yeah. tuner, it will say tuner in that same line. So okay. you need one tuner so that's like, and one or more it. non tuners. Okay. And then you okay. put, and they have to add up to level six because this is level six. And then you put those from the field into the graveyard, kind of like just sacrificing them. And then you mm -hmm. summon this out of your extra deck. Okay. All right. You can discard any number of cards to the graveyard, then target the same number of cards your opponent controls. Return those cards to the hand. You can only use this effect... <laughs> Wait a minute. You can discard any number of cards to the graveyard, then target the same number... That's busted. <laughs> <laughs> That's just... I'm going to pitch these cards to Cyclonic Rift your field. Yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty strong, I think. <laughs> uh, this card is errated also. Like, you're reading the errated version. Okay, what did it originally say? It's not, it wasn't once per turn. <laughs> <laughs> that's disgusting. Okay. So you can, like, pitch a, pitch a card and target their, their face-down card to see if it's, like, anything scary. And then if it's not anything scary, you can just, like, pitch more cards at different times in the turn. Whereas this version of it, the errated one, you have to do it all at the same time. Okay. That seems like it was way busted. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, these Ice Barrier cards are, some of them are crazy, so let's, let's go on to the next card. Gunnir. Gun Dragon of the Ice Barrier. One tuner plus one non-tuner water monster. It's a seven cost. Once per turn, you can discard up to two cards to the graveyard, then target the same number of your opponent controls and destroy them. Okay, so you can... You can theoretically just discard up two cards and destroy two of your opponent's creatures. Or, okay. or spells or whatever. Any, any or two spells. Cards. Oh, oh, yeah, cards, cards they control. Got it. Yep, pretty straightforward. But this is one level higher, so you need to, you know, yeah. do that. And it has to Simple be water math, monster. So it's, it's a little bit harder to summon, but it destroys stuff instead of returning them to the hand. Now let's go gotcha. on to the last Ice Barrier card. Kashula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. This one is a 9 cost. 1 tuner plus 2 non-tuner tuner monsters. When this card is Synchro Summoned, colon, you can banish <laughs> up to 1 card each from your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard. The card in the hand is chosen at random. Okay, that's pretty strong. Okay, so you rip... It's, it's like a... Kinda like a smallpox on a creature. Oh, yeah. In a of. way. In a way, yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, banishing one from hand, field, and graveyard with the same, with the same, cre with the same creature was pretty strong. 
hand, hand being random is like both good and bad. Yeah, for sure. Bit. You can't look like cards that look at your opponent's hand, like Thotsies in Yu Gi Oh! Are, are almost all banned. They're banned already. Like, they're, okay. I think every single one of them is banned. There, there might be some like really, really niche one that is not banned, but I'm pretty sure they're all banned. Quick, show a Yu Gi Oh! only player Thotsies. Oh my gosh, yeah. They, they would. Yeah, they, they would just think it's a, a mega band, for sure. Because there's a card that does that that does that same thing in Yu-Gi-Oh that was banned forever ago. Wild. You've seen yeah. You've seen invoked with magical meltdown, Alistair invocation, invoked Mechaba and Parker Trio. You've seen Runic with freezing curses, flashing fire, Runic Tip, Hugin, and Runic Fountain. You've seen ice barriers with uh with medallion mirror. And all the really good synchro monsters. Now, one of these decks has never been tier one. One of these decks used to be tier one, but is no longer tier one. And one of these decks is tier one right now. Go with me. Go okay. through your thought process a little bit and what you think could be the answer and why, and then come up with your final conclusion. Okay. <laughs> so off the bat, I think that the ice barrier deck is not the tier one deck uh because it i think is maybe too slow and it's more reactive to what your opponent is doing so that's my thought i think uh, of the three i'm gonna give it the third place spot uh or or the one that's never been tier one tier one yeah the one that's okay. never been tier one um and then what are the other two there's the tier one or is it's it's tier one right now, or and used to be tier one, but no longer tier one. Okay, so the one that I think is well, there's no dates on the card other than 1996, so I can't tell which is current. So you can't meta game this, <laughs> but <laughs> I can't meta I can't meta game this. Uh, I think the the deck that I guess this is just I'm taking a shot in the dark here. I guess that the invocation deck um i think the invocation deck used to be tier one and i think the deck that is currently tier one is the mill deck and why do you think that because that the hugin the the runic one i think that this is kind of just like one of those loops that's maybe hard to interrupt um that's that's what i think and i think that the alistair deck used to be tier one okay you ready to hear the verdict and what's actually yes. the correct ones oh no <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay all right i'm gonna say that you were right with the ice barriers and you're exactly right saying that it was too slow there are ice barrier monsters that i could have included in this but they're all really bad <laughs> so it wasn't even worth God, like showing God. you the ice barrier monsters uh, i wanted nice. to show you the extra deck I'm monsters one because for one. Because I want to tell you that the extra deck monsters are very, very good. Gungnir, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, okay. Destroy stuff was in extra decks before. You can put these in, in different extra decks without playing Ice Barriers, which is the thing. Brionac, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, uh, used to be, used to be okay. banned. Uh, and then they errated it and brought it back. Okay. Uh, Trishula, oh, okay, that's true. Yeah, Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, the last one here, was also banned. Interesting. And then they, they I believe they, they brought Trishula back as well now, but um, Trishula and Bryonic were both banned at one point because they were that good in just random other decks. Okay. okay. Um, but you got that part right. Now, cool. where it gets a little bit fuzzy is your last two picks. <laughs> okay. okay. Nope, you were right with everything. <laughs> yeah! yeah! Let's go! <laughs> Hell yeah! Yo, I, I'm... I'm hype. Yeah. I can take down a YCS now. Yes, Let's you can go. take down a YCS. Let's go. Put him in worlds. Put... <laughs> oh, that's wild. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's cool. I feel really good about that. Yeah. Uh, so the, the whole uh, magical meltdown, Alistair, add invocation, summon a thing. Yes, it is a loop, but you only get to, you realistically only get to do it once per turn. It is powerful. Okay. But it is a little bit slow. You play it more like a mid-range slash control deck. Um, you can gotcha. put this in more of an aggressive deck, and it's done, been done before, and it was tier one in the past, multiple different types of ways to play it, the invoked engine in your deck, or just play a full invoked deck, but it is too slow now and doesn't do enough. Now, Runic Freezing Curses and Runic Flashing Fire and the other Runic card that kills spells and trap cards is very, very strong, even right now, 
and it's been played as an engine in another in other decks and it's also been played as a deck by itself and yes you do get to mill your opponent uh it happens fairly often but a lot of the times you don't have to mill the opponent and they just die before their deck goes to zero but you are taking away key combo pieces out of their deck because notably it doesn't actually mill the cards the graveyard's very important in Yu-Gi-Oh. it exiles them it banishes them so oh that's true they don't get that's to true. use the cards that's again wild. unless they have some kind of crazy banished recursion deck like Fluanderies or something I don't expect you to know what that is, but it's like a deck that recurs from Banish a lot. Nope. So, anyway, Duh. you were exactly right, and that's kind of crazy. Yo, you are go. only the... Let's I believe you're only the second person that's ever gotten everything right on the show, so... Congratulations. <laughs> and they say Tron is bad. <laughs> so, yo, I feel... I feel yo, I'm honestly really gassed about that. Because I was like, bro, I'm gonna go on James's video today, and I'm... I'm not going to know anything, and I didn't know anything at all, really, but I'm really happy that through playing card games for 13 years that I could at least, like, assess uh, a little bit. And, and, um, so, yeah, yeah. I'm very stoked. <laughs> and, 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 th and thank you, everyone in the audience that have, that, have, um, that have thought about this type of video and have liked the videos like this in the past, because it really does let you get some insight on how decks are actually supposed to function in Yu-Gi-Oh! Instead of just giving you some random five cards and saying, is this good or not? This gives you a lot of context, and you can get everything right if you know if you like put your card game mind juices together and figure out what's going to be more cohesive than another thing. So, um, if you Double like time. this type of video, let me know in the comments. Let me know any other archetype that you might want to see on the show because these three archetypes I got from your comments. So, let me know what you want to see, and I'll put them in a video at least eventually. I will see you in the next one, and as always, peace.